And this is the point. It's not about moral superiority, okay? It's just about being responsible for one's actions and eating in a way that elevates you physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. Next slide, please. So people have heard about all the dangers of live food. And we talk about yin chi deficiency. Next slide, please. Um, spleen chi deficiency. Now, it's a myth. So let me show you how much myth it is. Next slide, please. So spleen chi deficiency syndrome in Chinese medicine, you're going to have digestive weakness, blood sugar imbalances, weight problems, obesity, alcohol, drug abuse, low vitality, chronic fatigue. Okay, that's classic. Now, next slide, please. Strong spleen chi, good energy, endurance, ability to grow, learn, good memory, emotional balance. That's what you get on a live food vegan diet. It's just the opposite of what people are claiming. Some of the reasons why in the old Chinese medicine, like the 1930s, is that the, the people who were vegan actually didn't have much food choices and options. They were eating white rice. So that's a little bit where that comes from. And then it's just kept as a belief system, ignoring the amazing advances we have in production quality of food and what we as Westerners have available to us. Because we do get the good energy, endurance, ability to grow, learn, good memory. That's a sign of the live food. Next slide, please. So it's a cure, not a cause. Next slide. So this is one that's uh, extremely important to think about. Live foods create a bot imbalance. Next slide. So we have what we call in Ayurveda kapha pitta vata. And vatas are uh, dietarily are people that are thrown out of balance with just salads. And vata is like air imbalance. You're easily thrown out of balance. Uh, your energy is very sporadic. You may be creative, poetic, but uh, your, your endurance is poor and so forth. Tall and thin uh, uh, is the physical body. So on my approach, applying the Ayurvedic understanding, vatas, and everybody with age becomes more vata, okay? Which I was just talking about, right? We can have the full range of everything, except how do we make it work? Because my approach is, how do we make it work? So people need, who are about the high oil content, was like avocados, nuts and seeds, soap nuts and seeds, not the dry nuts and seeds, because they create too much air or about the balance. So what else do Vata people need? They need warm, oily, sweet, salty, watery, soupy cuisine. When you do that, you can have live foods at any age. You're not affected by in the Vata zone of your, of your life cycle. That's the point. And then use certain amount of spices Asafoetida, cumin, ginger, and garlic, they all really help give a certain zing to uh, your food, which is important. So key, key is the Ayurvedic saying, oh, people who are, uh, you know, if you're doing live food, you're gonna get a bottom derangement. Not true. If you're just gonna eat salads without oil, nuts, seeds, avocados, yeah, it is true. You aren't going to do warm, oily, sweet, salty, watery, soupy cuisine. Yeah, it is true. But that's the point is we have a brain here. We can use it and we don't have to do the thing that imbalances it. That's my point. Next slide, please. So that's the point. Ralph Waldo Emerson. Society is always taken by surprise by any new example of common sense. And all I'm doing is sharing you some common sense way of looking at things. Thank you, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Right on. Okay, next slide, please. Now, one of the things that people worry about is, oh, well, I'm a vegan. 
I'm, I'm not going to get enough B12 or DNA, uh, DHA. Not true. Meat eaters and vegans, live food vegans, are all deficient in DHE. We do need to take a supplement of that. Um, and remember I said meat eaters as well, okay? Because you don't eat that much fish. And anyway, fish are pretty toxic at this point. So blue, yellow algae are where the fish get the long chain omega-3s. And we can get yellow algae extracts. And that does make a difference. 80% of the population in general, vegan or meat eaters, is low in magnesium. Again, by eating the leafy greens, we're going to do much better with that than meat eaters. Iodine deficiency, a huge problem. 75 to 95% of people are deficient in iodine. Um, to get the level you need, without going into a lot of detail, you do need to have a supplement. The, the, the soils are too deficient. The animals are too deficient. That's an important thing. You need a supplement. I use a particular supplement called Illuminine. It's scalar wave activated. That's another discussion. Very powerful and is very powerful against prions and viruses, incidentally, as well as bacteria and fungi. Now, the B12 issue is what people get on. And we need to really understand that 40% of meat eaters and 80% of vegans are deficient at the minimum of 200 nanograms of what we need. That's the minimum we need. Now, let's go to the optimum of what we need. 80% of meat eaters, 90% of vegans are deficient at the optimal levels of 400 to 450 nanograms of human active B12. Now, when I say human active, this is important because a lot of the blood tests are not testing for human active. The only really way of doing that is a urine test and for B12. And that will tell you if, you, if you're putting out human active B12, if you have sufficient. So both meat eaters and vegan live fooders generally are gonna run uh, deficient. And we're talking at the real high, of the high levels of B12 at the 400 to 450, 80%, 90%. So that's a high percentage either way. So we all need a supplement of B, human active B12. And, and uh, that's what I write in my book, Conscious Eating as well. This, next slide, please. Now, generally people since 1936 are deficient in minerals. So how do we get minerals in a simple way without taking a supplement is to have full salt. Now, what do I mean by salt? Sodium chloride, which everybody rightly so is saying is not good for you. That's not what I'm talking about. Salt has at least 82 minerals and it's uh, fully activated. Usually you want it um, mined out of the earth. So it has the earth energies in it. So we need a certain amount of salt. As we know, as we hear with the COVID thing, 85% of Americans are low in vitamin D. That's 30 uh, uh, milligrams, anything less than that. But really we wanna be around 60 to 80. I have generally found, clinically speaking, that most people need a vitamin D supplement. Um, and there are vegan supplements out there, you know, from mushrooms and so forth. Next slide. Vitamin K is another one. Again, the vegans are going to do much better, but Vegans and meat eaters are low in vitamin K, also the vitamin A. A lot of people can't convert the beta carotenes, that's the vegan vitamin A, into active vitamin A. Uh, and really, as I point here, 27 to 45% only get a 9% conversion. I do recommend as the only 
kind of supplement supplement here is the vitamin A, uh, vegan vitamin A as a supplement. Uh, I haven't been able to solve it like I have with the others. Next slide, please. So let's look at cuisine, which is a little different than diet. Cuisine is a style. You know, we have a vegan or Cajun or Cantonese or vegan life food cuisine. Those are cuisines. Now, the key is macronutrient ratio. That's really the important thing. So let's talk about that for a moment. Next slide, please. So part of this whole thing that I'm talking about is we have to apply a certain level of intelligence to our diet. Next slide. So we are different. We are not a bunch of cows. So in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition, June 2013, they do, it's titled Genome-Wide Meta-Analysis Shows Common Genetic Variants Associated with Macronutrient Intake. What does that mean? Well, first, we've got a study. That's what it means. We got some science behind it. It means people are different. People need a different ratio of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. That's what it means. And to be successful, and 99% of the people I work with who follow my approach are successful vegans, are successful life food vegans, because they include how to individualize the diet. So, so, so important here. Okay, so what they found is on chromosome 19, there's a locus which tells you how much fat, how much carbohydrate, and how much protein you need. Think about that. So there's not one diet for everybody. And part of the work of being successful with this, which is what we're talking about, we want to be successful, not theoretical, is finding out how much fat, protein, and carbohydrate you need. Next slide, please. And part of that, this is the Ayurvedic scheme that I talked about. So from zero to 12, pretty much everybody's cough, a watery little fat, you know, and so forth. And then Tiger is, is the very well-built athletic. And then with age, after 60, they say there's kind of a, a drying of the tissues. Drying of the tissues. Well, and the joints don't do so well, drying the tissues. So that's where you go into having to urinate every hour and a half because, or two hours, because we don't want our tissues to get dry. Okay, so what do you need as a vata? You need more full salt, meaning 82 mineral salt, like the scalar salts I talked about. But what you also need is have lots and lots of fluid. And how do you know? Easy. Unless you have a kidney problem or a bladder problem, you need to be urinating every hour and a half to two hours. That's why we did the little demo for you. Okay? It was a little purposeful. Um, but that's really important. We've got to understand that with the life cycle, our needs change, our physiological needs change. I'll tell you a little story. You know, I started out with the push ups. Uh, in my 60s, I was stuck. I was just stuck in a certain amount of pull-ups, actually. I was at 25 pull-ups. I couldn't do any better. Then I read at the age of 65, you need slightly more protein. So men at the age of 45 uh, have double overall rates of cancer because they're eating too much protein. So I've been careful about that. But at 65 or more, you need to increase your protein. I increased my protein intake by one tablespoon of blue-green algae. And I went in, in really two to three weeks up to 50 pull-ups. Slight change in protein. That's kind of the subtlety we're looking at. We've got to pay attention. And we are the research lab, not some book, not what somebody tells you, except, hey, research it, know yourself. So with vata, we have to change our diet. Watery, souply, oily uh, type of diet, which isn't really good if you're a kapha, 
and you're 10 years old, not so good. Okay, touch of sweet. Well, I don't do too much sweet, but uh, you know, a little bit of something that adds to it. <laughs>